Vinyl records. One of the most iconic pieces of music thing jigs out there. These are something that most of the older side and even a handful of the younger side will probably know and remember. On the older side of things, you have a burnt rejected plate that will sing your cupboard for like ever that spins around in half of a microwave thing just somehow making music for a giant air horn. And over at the younger side, it was this random piece of charcoal with a sticker on it that you found in your grandparents' cupboard. That can just be a random collection of pixels that somehow makes noise when you put it into a brown box. It's one of those that magic item things that starts off some sort of machine thing that makes ink. Or it's a cool album cover in a game all about beat shapes and just. Needless to say, vinyl records are superior. So much so that I managed to get some of my own. And since I've been overly obsessed with them, I've spent the past couple days researching absolutely everything there is to know about these so I can make the everything you probably didn't need to know about them document in an attempt to bring them back. We're going through um how they're made, what's their history, how do they work, and if, if they hold up to today's standards for sounds. So, realistically, vinyl records were created in around the 1930s, but the creation of the concept for them was actually created way before that, around 1877. You see, this guy remembered that audio and music and sounds in general travel in waves. So he had the genius idea of, wait, if I can get a big horn, then can I just make those waves on a piece of paper? And that's exactly what he did. He got a large piece of paper and covered it in lantern oil, got a giant horn, with a needle head and got some lady to sing for about 10 seconds. And with that, he figured out that he can get the sound of the lady singing funneled in by the horn, and with the needle head, he can use that sound to etch out the different waves of sound on the paper. This guy was a literal genius. <laughs> genius. This guy was a literal genius for about 10 seconds. It didn't take him long to figure out that recording the audio was much different to playing the audio. And even though people believe that to be the first official audio recording of a human singing, there was just no way to play it at all. No one could figure out how to play the lost song. It was just sitting there, just waiting there for about 150 years. So, great job, genius. Should I say genius? Okay, now we bring it back to the 1930s. Everything is still black and white, crackling screen images are all over the TV, and the kids are listening to jazz. I'm sorry for that, I won't have those effects on screen anymore and do that voice. If I did, all of you would probably leave. No, wait, why are you leaving? No, stop, stop, stop leaving, stop, 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 get it, stop, stop, stop. You know, this would be the perfect segment to transition to a persuasive argument and 50 paragraphs of te text telling you guys why you should absolutely subscribe to this channel and like the videos and hit that notification bell. But you know what? I'm not going to because I can't get any of you to do anything, apparently. Not in my book, though. Don't worry. I'll find a way, though. So it's now the 1930s, and this guy is sick and tired of hiring a jazz band every time he and his girlfriend wants to play Scrabble in some room. So he thought it was finally time to take this previous invention from like 150 years ago and make it actually good and work this time. So he took the large line of waves and turned it into a disc instead because squares are just outdated and old. And too inconvenient. We want this thing to be the absolute convenient of convenience. So let's quickly go over how they're made. Essentially what vinyls are, are just an analog recording of sound waves. And so there's a machine that spins the disc with a horn attached to it to focus all the sound and a needle head to etch out the different waves and the stuff that the music is making. Forming little grooves, ups and downs and inclines, declines, peaks and troughs, all that kind of stuff. These next few steps are a little bit more complicated so let's just simplify. In the next step you make what is known as a stamper, which is a complete inverted copy of the disc made out of metal and then it is then put into a hydraulic press which is pushed down into vinyl. A few bits of finalizing later 
those grooves turn into ridges and you have vinyl. If you've seen a vinyl in person, you would absolutely be blown away by how small these ridges are. People fit whole album covers on these. Now actually playing these discs is a little bit of a different story. So basically you put the disc on one of these watered down microwaves with an arm attached to it that you rest on the disc with a needle on the top of it that will soon inspire the modern day compass that would usually be tipped with diamond or some hard material. Only this time, instead of etching out the grooves, they follow along the grooves. As the disc spins, the arm follows up and down and up and down along the ridges and triggers the magnet thing inside the machine that's surrounded by coil. The machine then turns that sound into an electrical current which is then amplified and brought into speakers turning back into sound which creates the music we all love. And with this new technology, vinyl started to dominate the market since it was the only way to record music at the time. The US military even used it as a way of communication in World War II when Mustache Man was trying to take over Europe. There was absolutely no stopping the vinyl, but as everything else goes, there was one predecessor, I think that's the word, that was willing to stand up against the vinyl. The complete convenience that was set out to be more convenient and the king of convenience thus far, something we still recognize today, the cassette tape. At about 1963, a Dutch company would then move on to create these cassette tapes. Now these cassette tapes were also analog recordings of sounds, but they stored sound in a very different way. Instead of carving out different waves and stuff on a disc, the cassette tape would use a combination of film and magnets to record audio, and was shown to be a lot more convenient than the vinyl. Not only was it just easier to record on the cassette tape, but you could also record and play back the audio on the same device. Another pretty obvious and pretty important factor about the cassette tape was that it was just generally a lot smaller than the vinyls. Not only was the actual tape smaller, but the thing you could record the tapes on was also a lot smaller and a lot simpler to use. Now obviously people saw this massive convenience and started converting from the vinyl to the cassette tape. So things are looking up for the cassette tape that are now taking over the world piece by piece and while they certainly weren't perfect, I mean the film could just spit around everywhere and it was a pain in the, pain in the backside to put back. But they would soon run into the same problem that the vinyls had. Someone just having the urge to create the next big convenience king that dethrones and unconvenience the previous convenience king of convenience that conveniently convenientized the convenience king of before unconvening them. In about 1982, some American people were just like, you know what, let's remake the vinyl, but have it actually work this time. CDs were just basically the miniature vinyls. However, this time they were modernized to the absolute extreme. Instead of being an analog recording, they would store digital information made out of binary code, that being ones and zeros. They would use lights that appears at the bottom of the disc to store all this information. You would put this CD into a DVD player that just has a laser that scans the light and turns that digital information back into music or film. In fact, let's talk about that for a second. This was probably one of the main features that threw the other two competitors out of the market. Not only was it, well, it was at least smaller than the vinyl, not the tape, but it was easier to make, easier to put stuff on it, and it didn't have to hold just music. It could hold films, it could hold photos, it could hold documents, as long as you don't booted up to the extreme. It wouldn't take long for the CDs to start overthrowing the cassette tape. However, Vinyl saw the secret technique that CDs were using with light and stuff, and they decided that they wanted a piece of that cake. However, that didn't really go all that well. <laughs> Idiots! Things were looking really, really great for the CDs. Until Apple showed up out of nowhere. Introducing the all new and improved Apple iPod, invented in 2001. And with the combination of Apple iTunes, CDs reached their peak in 2002. By 2015, CD sales plummeted by 11% in the United States and about 18.5% in 2016. And then when CDs thought it couldn't get any worse, Introducing Netflix, Disney Plus,
<laughs> Going back to vinyl, you'd think that this is the end of their story, right? No, they're still around. 2023, they're still being sold at stores. The vinyl players, they're still doing the stuff they even used as wall decoration. How? How are they doing this? How are people still listening to vinyl? How? Why, why is vinyl so immortal? Well, it's obviously because they're superior, but there's actually some other explanations to why this is here. Let's start off with the first one that we're all waiting for. Does vinyl sound better than modern day music? And the answer is quite unclear. It's all about the personality, you know? What are you into? But we don't care ab But we don't care about that. Mathematically, they're like pretty much the same. The, the working theory that I have for why these are still around is because it's just a sign of the old times, you know, of the good old days. Speaking of that, there's literally an album from Big Giant Circle named The Glory Days that has a vinyl in the cover of it. Also, they look cool. Have you seen one in person? They look superior. They make nice wall decorations. So, is vinyl really dead? Nah, not really. It's strange to think that some people generally believe that vinyl is the only way to listen to music. Huh. CG5, Dear Games, Living Tombstone, you've got work to do. I mean, really, as long as we have all the audio files on this planet still, and absolutely no way of listening to music is considered dead. Except for the CD vinyls also. Anyway, that was about 12 minutes of your time listening about a stupid, no saturation, rejected play that you found in your grandma's garage. I give you free information, you give me a free subscribe. Got it? Deal. Okay. Bye. What am I doing here? This is all useless anyway.